hello students so there is a uh, uh, next life process which is respiration so first of all here is the definition of respiration in a living cell the food which is in form of glucose it get burnt in presence of oxygen or even in lack of it to produce energy this entire reaction is called respiration it is a very important life process because by this process we are going to get the energy to perform all the life functions there are basically two type of respirations uh, based on whether the uh, respiration required oxygen or it can be uh, done in absence of it so the first type of respiration is called aerobic respiration in this the complete breakdown of glucose takes place this reaction takes place in presence of oxygen means it requires oxygen for the complete breakdown of glucose during aerobic respiration the main products which are formed during aerobic respiration are carbon dioxide water vapor and large amount of energy this reaction occurs in cytoplasm as well as mitochondria inside the cell here i have given you the uh, reaction which takes place during aerobic re respiration <clears throat> this is glucose c6h12o6 and uh, this is the oxygen which we inhale both the things are present inside the living cell and uh, by burning the glucose in presence of oxygen see here six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water are formed and a large amount of energy which in terms of kilocalorie the value is 686 kilocalories or we can say that 36 atp molecules are formed the second type of respiration is anaerobic respiration in this the incomplete breakdown of glucose takes place means the glucose is not going to convert entirely in carbon dioxide it occurs in in absence or lack of oxygen either the oxygen is totally absent or there is shortage of oxygen the products are during the anaerobic uh, respiration the products may be ethyl alcohol which is also known as ethanol or lactic acid and less amount of energy is formed this reaction means anaerobic respiration occurs only in cytoplasm it means that anaerobic respiration does not take place in mitochondria here i have uh, given the reactions which occurs during anaerobic <coughs> anaerobic respiration see the first case this is the glucose which is used as fuel and this uh, reaction first is uh, taking place in yeast where the oxygen is totally absent uh, means in absence of oxygen this uh, reaction is going to take place and students this reaction which occurs in yeast in absence of oxygen this is called fermentation okay so after fermentation what products are formed let us see this is ethyl alcohol or ethanol i have told you the formula is c2h5oh so two molecules of ethyl alcohol are formed two uh, molecules of carbon dioxide are formed and 56 kilocalorie energy is released which is much less than the aerobic respiration okay now what uh, the next case can be during the anaerobic respiration here the uh, oxygen was totally absence absent but what can be the second case that glucose can be combusted in lack of oxygen lack of oxygen means there is shortage of oxygen this uh, case can be there in our tired muscles when we do a lot of physical labor like we are running or doing physical exercise our muscles they produce lactic acid means one glucose molecule is burnt and two molecules of lactic acids are formed and very less amount of energy is produced that is two molecules of atp are produced only so these are the two cases which can be there in anaerobic respiration now what happened during the breakdown of glucose so breakdown of glucose is basically a two step process the first step is uh that glucose which is a six carbon compound as we can see uh, from the um, formula of glucose that it is a six carbon compound c6 
so it uh, just break down in absence of oxygen this entire process takes place in absence of oxygen in the cytoplasm of the cell so this six carbon glucose it break down to form two molecules of pyruvic acid and this pyruvic acid is a three carbon compound so in first step this entire uh, process takes place uh, in cytoplasm only no mitochondria and no uh, no oxygen is required so what happened next that this continues during anaerobic respiration which takes place in cytoplasm only because for anaerobic respiration no oxygen is required so the later on process also keep on continuing in cytoplasm the uh, two molecules of pyruvic acid which were formed uh, earlier so two things can happen here either in yeast this pyruvic acid will convert into ethanol carbon dioxide and energy or if this reaction takes place in tired muscle in lack of oxygen then lactic acid and less amount of energy is formed so we can say that uh, the first step of respiration as well as the entire anaerobic respiration takes place in cytoplasm the second step it only occurs in aerobic respiration this step is going to take place only in aerobic respiration which requires oxygen and this process takes place in mitochondria so what happened here the two uh, molecules of pyruvic acid they react with oxygen in mitochondria and produce six molecules of carbon dioxide water molecules and energy is released so uh, now uh, till now we have seen that uh, how the breakdown of glucose takes place here also i have given you the formula of pyruvic acid that is c3h4o3 now uh, one more thing uh, one more thing uh, later previously i have told you um, about aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration through those points you can differentiate between them okay so the next topic is exchange of gases in lower organisms how does the exchange of gases means how the oxygen is taken inside the body and how the carbon dioxide is released out of the body in lower organism the entire process um, what happen in lower organism i am explaining here by giving few examples like uh, amoeba paramecium which are unicellular and sponges sponges and hydra which are simple uh, multicellular organisms in these organisms uh, the exchange of gases takes place by body surface or uh, in case of amoeba or paramecium we can say this process occurs by the cell membrane itself and the simple process of diffusion is uh, uh, responsible for this entire process by simple diffusion the oxygen is taken in from the air and the carbon dioxide is released out in the air in case of earthworm moist skin is responsible for this exchange of gases in frogs in case of uh, tadpole the uh, early developing stage gills are there for the exchange of gases while in adults moist skin and lungs are responsible for this exchange in fishes gills uh, are present over there gills are basically the fold of skins which are surrounded by number of blood capillaries so uh, when the water flows over the gills um, at the same time the exchange of gases takes place means the oxygen which is dissolved in water is taken inside the blood capillaries and the carbon dioxide which is present in the blood is dumped out in uh, in that water which flows over the gills by the simple process the fishes can do this exchange of gases in mosquitoes and cockroaches etc small pores are present on their body surface which are known as spiracles these are the openings which open in a tracheal system tracheal system is a a uh, network like tube like a uh, tube system which contain con colorless hemolymph and all these things are responsible for the exchange of gases in these mosquitoes and cockroaches now what about the exchange of gases in human beings how does this takes place so this exchange of gases in human beings is simply referred to breathing so what happened during breathing let us see this thing inhaling oxygen rich air the first thing which happened during breathing is that we inhale the air which is rich in oxygen now next uh, what thing we do we exhale the carbon dioxide rich 
air. This thing, these two processes <coughs> takes place with the help of ribs and cartilage. That is the diaphragm. Ribs are the bones which cover our chest cavity and cartilaginous uh, diaphragm is there which is also useful during the breathing process. It is totally a mechanical process means no chemical substances are involved during breathing and it occurs in lungs or we can say that it takes place in our respiratory system uh, where the lungs are the most important organ. What is the mechanism of breathing? How do we inhale or exhale? Let us see. The first step of breathing is called inhalation or it is also called inspiration. Now what happened during inhalation? Intake of oxygen rich air into lungs alveoli. The oxygen uh, rich air which is outside our body, we take it inside and it reaches to lungs alveoli. For this the contraction of respiratory muscles takes place and this contraction of respiratory muscles require energy that is why it is an active process. Dome shaped diaphragm is lowered and it becomes flat. Below the lungs there is a diaphragm uh, which is a muscular structure. So it becomes flattened that is why uh, its shape changes. What else is done there? Ribs, uh, uh, like uh, 12 pair of ribs are present which moves upward and outward. Both these movements of uh, diaphragm and ribs, because of these two movements, volume of thoracic cavity or we can say chest cavity, it increases. When the volume increases, the lungs get space to expand. So lungs expand and pressure inside them decreases. When the lungs expand, the pressure inside them decreases. To fill this space or to balance this less pressure, air rushes into the lungs through respiratory tract. Now, lungs alveoli, uh, as they are surrounded by blood capillaries, so they take oxygen which is present in the air and diffuses it in the blood. By this process, the oxygen reaches in the blood. And from blood, the carbon dioxide which is formed during the respiration, it diffused out from the blood and uh, get collected inside the alveoli. So what has happened here that uh, we have taken the oxygen from the lungs into the blood and the carbon dioxide is dumped from blood into the lungs. So here the exchange of gases have been done in the lungs. What is exhalation? It is also called expiration. So expelling carbon dioxide rich air out of the body is called exhalation. During this the respiratory muscles simply relax. For relaxing the muscles no energy is required that is why it is a passive process. The muscular diaphragm it raised and comes in its normal dome shape means it again uh, return back to its original position and ribs they again move inward and downward because of these two movement the volume of the chest cavity de decreases when the volume of chest cavity decreases the lungs compress they feel pressure and the pressure inside the lungs increases and because of this high pressure the carbon dioxide rich air rushed out of lungs through the respiratory tract. This is the carbon dioxide which our lungs have taken from the blood. So this carbon dioxide is again thrown out from the same respiratory tract from where the oxygen has entered. Now there is an important point that uh, always a residual amount of air remain present in lungs. Uh, whether we, are, uh, we breathe in or breathe out, especially during breathing out, we do not remove the entire air from our lungs. It does not mean that the lungs are totally empty because if it is so, then they will collapse. They will stick to each other. So to avoid such condition, a residual amount of air is already filled in the lungs so that the lungs do not collapse. Now, what about the respiratory system of human beings? It includes certain body organs. So we are looking them one by one. And for that 
uh, I'm having one diagram also. So we will also see the diagram. So the first organ of our uh, human respiratory system is nostril. So there are two large sized apertures which are present at the lower end of nose. And these are responsible for inhalation means through nostrils the air enters the respiratory system. Let us see the diagram. Here is the nasal passage. The starting point there are the two apertures which are known as nostrils. Next is the nasal chamber. Nasal chamber is basically lined by tiny hair and mucus. Both the things have very important function in our respiratory tract. The hair which are present in the nasal chamber, they facilitate filtration of dust particles from the air. The air which we inhale may have some dust particles so we don't want them to reach to our lungs as they can cause allergy or irritation. So they are, um, uh, they are already filtered in the So the dust particles which are present in the air are filtered in, uh, by the hair in the nasal chamber. And the mucus lining which is also present in the nasal chamber, it uh, has some specific functions like it moist the air. The air which enters our nose may be dry so it has to be moist so that it uh, does not cause irritation and it also prevent microorganisms entering the lungs. Because whatever the air we are breathing in, it may have some microorganism. So when we inhale such air, the uh, microorganism get stuck with the mucus. And when we blow our nose, they are thrown away. Uh, it also manages the air temperature according to our body temperature. So all these works are done in the nasal passage. The next organ is pharynx. We already have studied about pharynx in the digestive system also. It is the uh, uh, that uh, a chamber where the food pipe crosses windpipe. Here I have shown in the diagram. This is the pharynx. It is a box like chamber like structure where food pipe crosses windpipe. Next is glottis which leads to windpipe. It remains closed by epiglottis. A uh, flap like structure is present in glottis which is called epiglottis. So when we swallow the food, it closes so that the food does not enter in windpipe. <clears throat> the next structure is a long narrow uh, structure tube which is called trachea. It is also called windpipe. It is surrounded by cartilaginous rings. Uh, again the function is same so that the trachea does not collapse. Larynx is uh, uh, also known as voice box. It is present at the upper part of trachea. See the diagram. This is windpipe which is uh, called, uh, known as trachea also. It is surrounded by rings of cartilage and its upper part. The upper part of trachea has larynx which is uh, also called the voice box and because of this larynx we are able to speak or to produce sound. Now bronchi. The lower part of, of trachea is divided into two bronchi which are further branched into bronchioles. Let us see in the diagram. This is the windpipe or trachea which is divided into uh, two parts which are known as bronchi. These are the bronchi. And see that uh, the bronchi of every side is further divided into branches. These branches are known as bronchioles. Now the structure of lungs. Bronchioles and up in tiny sac like structures which are known as alveoli. Uh, singular alveoli is known as alveolus. Alveoli are surrounded by blood capillaries. Millions of alveoli are bounded together in a thin transparent two layered pleura forming lungs. See in the diagram that uh, all the bronch uh, bronchioles they end up in a sac like structure bag like structure which are known as alveoli. And alveoli are surrounded by blood capillaries and this entire structure is surrounded by two layers. Two membranes are there which are known as pleura and this entire bounded structure is known as lungs. The right lung is comparatively larger. It is having three lobes or parts while the left lung is comparatively smaller which is having only two lobes. Now this is the last part where we are going to see how the exchange of gases between alveolus, blood and tissues takes place. See this carefully. 
it is the inhaled air uh, which we inhale it is rich in oxygen uh, through the respiratory tract it finally enters the alveolus in alveolus this oxygen is taken in and thrown into blood through blood capillaries so uh, now the blood capillaries having blood has oxygen in them now this uh, oxygenated blood it uh, what happen in the blood this oxygen binds with the hemoglobin which is present in the rbcs now when uh, uh, this uh, oxygenated blood reaches to the tissue the tissue this oxygen is released in the tissues and every cell of our body gets the oxygen this entire process is done by diffusion only now uh, when the oxygen reach in the cell so afterwards the cellular respiration takes place where glucose is burnt in presence of oxygen and carbon dioxide and water vapor is released so this is the carbon dioxide which comes from the tissue and now this carbon dioxide enters in blood now through blood capillaries this carbon dioxide reaches in alveoli in alveolar sac this carbon dioxide is released in alveolar sacs and uh, finally uh, the uh, carbon dioxide gets collected in the lungs now this carbon dioxide is sent out through nostrils along with water vapor and this carbon dioxide and water vapor rich air is exhaled out of our nostrils in this way the entire process gets completed so we have uh, by now we have seen how the exchange of gases and respiration takes place in human body and this is the last part of this topic that is the exchange of gases in plants plants do not have a complex uh, uh, body organ system to do the respiration or breathing or exchange of gases simply this process is done by diffusion so this is the first thing that the exchange of gases in plant is done by simple diffusion process uh different organs or the different parts of the plant have different structures for this exchange of gases like leaves they have stomata so through stomata oxygen gets uh, inside the leaves and the carbon dioxide after the respiration is given out through the same stomatas in stems the lenticles are present lenticles are also the small apertures or uh, holes but they do not have guard cells as the stomatas have they keep on open throughout the lifetime so uh, through these lenticles the stem breathes or we can say that it takes in oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide now what about roots they also need oxygen so the general surface of root or root hair uh, by the simple diffusion process they take oxygen inside and gives out the uh, carbon dioxide which is produced during the respiration in this way the respiration takes place in living organism i hope you enjoyed the uh, topic thank you have a good day